Thanks for introduction. Uh, today I will be talking about instant upgrades, what it is, and how Rector can help you. Uh, I'm an open source consultant, and I love PHP, so I write about it twice a week. And I also help developers to be happy. I will consult companies and uh, help them to convert their private so source code to open source in the way they enjoy it. Uh, I must confess I'm a GitHub addict. I, I go there very often and create open source code. So if you procrastinate by going Facebook and Instagram, then I go procrastinate by committing. The other thing I love is uh, people to hang around. That's why I started meetups in, uh, in our country, in Europe, two years ago. Uh, at the moment, we are in many cities, and I also love to go abroad, so I'm very happy to be here. And what I also love is learning and teaching. So we try to organize lectures with our best speakers so they can uh, share their skills and so other developers can learn from them. So to my talk, today I would like to share with you uh, these three points. Why we upgrade, how do we do it, and uh, how can we make it better? Uh, just for a start, uh, I would like to check uh, the frameworks, what are using. Uh, is there somebody using Symfony? Cool. And Laravel? Cool. Uh, are there some other frameworks you use here? Yeah? Zend? Cool, cool. Great. So many frameworks. Okay, so if you use frameworks, you probably know what I'll be talking about. Uh, when you start your new project, it usually uses the newest PHP, newest dependencies, the newest Symfony, Zend, or Laravel, and everything is very nice. But as the life goes and uh, business, business rules are applied, you need to add more features, you need to grow the code, you need to use REST API, etc., etc. And not only that, even if you would develop uh, just a little, little code, little application, and you want to grow it, you also depend on others. For example, PHP. And PHP is released every, every year nowadays, and it's being deprecated every year, the older version. So you have to adapt to this. Uh, you can, like, you can forget about it, which most companies do. They like, it will work. We don't have to upgrade it. We don't want to pay our developers to upgrade applications. But uh, in my experience, it usually gets them in like eight or 10 years. So they have to delete the whole code and start from a brand new. And also, frameworks will work like this. For example, Symfony is releasing uh, LTS version every I think two years. So every two years you have to, you are forced basically to upgrade again. And this will soon get you to this shitstorm when you have to upgrade code or work with a legacy. But legacy code is not something that is bad, it's just something that is hard to maintain. So is there a way to work with this? Where if you want to upgrade, for example, from Symfony 3, to Symfony 4, or any other PHP, for example, from 5 to 7, etc. We can do it ourselves. We can study what has changed, uh, how do we upgrade it, read posts about it, and also use PHP Storm. If there was some class change or method change, we can use uh, PHP Storm amazing refactor feature and just rename it, right? Uh, but there are also some problems. If, there are, if you are lucky enough to have this upgrade and uh, change log in the, in the project in open source, there might be even some information what has changed and how. But for example, there is missing namespace. So if you see something like this, you have to go to the GitHub, explore the repository, find the namespace, and fix it. And also, I found a few cases when the namespace, if, this, if it's mentioned there, it's not right. So you have to, again, go to GitHub, explore Git logs, Git blame, etc., which is pity. The, the, the same goes 
not only for the new spaces, but method names, arguments, type hints, etc. And sometimes the precautions are uh, A to B, and sometimes they are dropped. So you have to find out yourself if the class was removed, and you have to do it manually, or if it was renamed, and you can put it somewhere else. Okay, so you can do it like this, or you can hire somebody. You can hire expert, you can hire the author of uh, the open source project, and he will explain what has changed, how, how to refactor, how to do it yourself. It's also a way, it costs not time, but it costs money, and I think it's, that's a very effective way, way than to do it yourself, because if you do it yourself, you will find a lot of blind paths. And the third thing is you can outsource it. For some, um, for some frameworks like this uh, Laravel, there are now services that can uh, upgrade the code for you. You will just give them a couple of bucks and they will bump the version of framework you are using. But the problem is that your project probably is not using just one or two packages. This is a composer JSON content from middle-size Symfony project, and as you can see, there is much more than just Symfony. So in the end, you will end up uh, having many, many trainings that are very costly for you, and or you will have to stick with, with the old version. Actually, I was, or still am one of these guys, and go to companies, and I try to explain them how to do it in new Symfony, how to do it in new Neta, which is Czech framework, because I'm kind of like GitHub addict, so I always follow the news. But after like 10th training, I was starting to weird that I'm telling the same stuff over and over again to many developers. Companies are paying for that, but it's still very slow, right? You have to l teach every single person about this news. So I wanted something that's better, that doesn't depend on a person or money or even a framework. I don't want to use just one single package that is upgraded. I want to use everything that is on GitHub available. So that's why I thought that this could be automated, right? It's still learn, explain, do, forget. Learn, explain, do, forget. With new framework, with Symfony 4, you can forget what you learned for Symfony 2, basically, because there are always news and news. So that's why I started to think about it in a different way, in an aut automated way, that there could be tool that could change such code. So I made a rector. A year ago, I started on it. Uh, in short, it's a command line tool built on Symfony PHP parser and PHP stand that will automate these A to B changes for you. You, won't, you don't have to learn anything, you don't have to pay any trainings, you just run the tool. It, at the moment it changes PHP code and a little bit of y, YML. And you can use it not only for um, instant upgrades, like these Symfony, Laravel, etc. But if you have your own internal framework and you want to upgrade, for example, 100 classes in some way, or you want to refactor it to some uh, open source code, you can also use it. When I name some basic changes, it can rename basic elements of PHP, it can convert namespace, and it can work uh, or modify method arguments. It can also add type hints, which is uh, something you will often have to do if you use th third, part third party code with PHP 7 and change visibility. But it can do also much more. It can work with the logic of the framework. It can uh, uh, get in the container of the framework and does it work? Yeah. And for example, you see that this, um, in old version of Symfony, you had a global container available everywhere with a locator of service with string. But now it's preferred uh, construction injection. So if you want to refactor to new Symfony, you actually have to find all these places where is this get, find the service in the container, 
get the type, replace it in a constructor, and replace it here, which is really tiring if you have 100 controllers and you have to do it everywhere. So this all can Rector do. Yes. And how does these rules look like? Actually, there are already pre-written uh, definitions. For example, this one is um, for method name replace. When you, for example, have get line and it's changed to get template line. So instead of using PHP storm find and replace and using forget line, you can use this. But it also works with the context. So if you have uh, the weak node and there's get line, it will detect it. But if there is, for example, a template class with get line, it will be skipped, which, which is what PHP Storm cannot do. Uh, I try to make the, make the usage as broad as possible, so I try to support more and more frameworks. At the moment, these are the ones who are supported. And I will try to make a little demo. So let's see how it works. Does this work? Yeah, this is better. OK. Uh, maybe can I ask you? Yeah. Can I ask you to hold it? Yeah, okay. Sure, because this. OK, thank you. So this is a, this is a Symfony application. We have some uh, kernel, which is basically like a simple container with some services. There's the source code, where is controller, form, and some dumb service. And there is a small test. So as I showed you, uh, if you have old, old Symfony, where is this get? And you want to change it to constructor injection, you can either do it manually like this and try to type hint. Yeah, you see it's very slow. So uh, instead you can use Rector. Rector is just normal composer package that you install by composer require Rector Rector. And here are some predefined rules that you can run. Second. OK, so it's a normal binary file. You can run with bin, bin rector, process, and uh, the directory you want to process. Dry run is just dry run. So if you, want, if you run a rector on uh, our controller with dry run, you will see that it will find the service of its type, will create the property, constructor, and replace it in the code for every service you, you also have there. But as you can see, it's not very nice because we don't have spaces here and this is not important. Imported. So instead of doing it uh, just like this, you can use with style. And yeah, it didn't work, sorry. <laughs> but uh, back. Actually, it will, uh, it will run your own coding standard tool, if you have any available. And it will, it will use the, uh, the coding set you have. So you can run Rector with your own coding standard. But as you can see, it replaced what it should replace. So there is a added property in constructor and replaced in the code. Some other change that happened. And to show you that it's not only just string and replace, here we have form type text, and here we have it too. Uh, in Symfony, this was actually replaced by class type, so we have to find what is the new class for this and replace it here and import it. Or again, you can run it with Rector. This is the second one. So we'll just run process, SCRS form. And see the file. Yeah. And you see that it replaced the string with the class type, but it left the other string uh, B. So if you would be doing this with uh, replacing PHP Storm, you would probably have many false positives. But Rector knows that 
he is in a method where there's a method called add and it's the second argument and it's specific string. So the next case is uh, just a very simple one for PHP unit. You can try it at home if you want. It's actually not a big of a deal, but uh, if you have expected exception annotation and you want to change it to method, which is uh, recommended, and you don't want to do it manually again, like this expected exception and copy pasting this, you can use level, which is basically just a set of rules combined together with a version of the, of the project. And it will actually remove these annotations and turn them into methods. And many, many more uh, for PHP. And there is also one for YAML, because not only, not only PHP code changes, but also our configuration, and sometimes it's renamed shift up, shift down, and also you don't want to do it manually. Uh, in this case, there is a Symfony security bundle, and there was changed just one line, but you have to find where it is and what does it do. So here was changed key to secret. Again, it's very simple, but you don't have to do it manually in your whole application. And this is also useful if you, for example, do many changes in the bulk and you want to send it for code review and you will get feedback and you have, will have to git rebase, etc. You would have to, again, do it manually. But um, with Rector, you can do it, uh, you can rebase and just rerun Rector again. The last thing I would like to show you is to how it's actually configured. As you can see above, I have two rules here. These are basically uh, just services. As you can see, uh, it's normal container from, uh, from, uh, uh, from Symfony, and you will just define your services here. Check if this. Yeah, I, I would have to uh, enable the Symfony plugin. So I have how to complete. Yeah. So if you want to type some uh, predefined vector, you can just try method vector, and you will see what everything is there. And if you want to, for example, replace method by some type, you will just type method vector, hit control space. It will show you. We will pick it up. Uh, then there is usual constructor argument. You have to complete. So we'll use it here, and then we just write some type, old method, new method, and that's it. And this is, this is the way you, s we will, you can simply use it for yourself, but uh, the best way to use it, if you are like starting with director, is to use some uh, use level, as you could saw, uh, yeah, if you use some level that doesn't exist, it will show you all the available levels. So there are, for example, something for Doctrine, for Cake PHP, Twig, Silver Stripe, etc. And these are just, for example, if you look at Cake PHP 3.6, these are again just a set of rules replace method, replace class, and so on. So, thank you. I hope just one thing went wrong, okay. Uh, I often ha have a question, what's the most complex rector? Because these are basically just replacing of something according to logic. And uh, this, one, this one is I made uh, two months ago because in rector I have uh, at the moment 120 rules and they had three methods and I needed to merge two of them to one but also respect some arguments and instead of return null, return false, and so on. So instead of doing this manually, you can actually use rector and write your own rule. 
and do these bulk changes for you. You can actually see it on GitHub, on Rector, Rector, in these examples. OK, so I'd like to finish up with something that this might sound like too futuristic for you. But I believe that when more and more frameworks will adopt this approach, instead of writing upgrade MD, we can uh, soon enjoy the newest version of anything for almost free. Thank you. <laughs> so do you have some questions? No? OK. Yes? Is there a Rector plugin for PHP Storm? No. <laughs> oh, that's but, so sad. But you can, yeah, but you can, I think some better tools are just not made for plugins. For example, if you have a plugin for Code Sniffer, it doesn't work well, but you can use it already with uh, command line. Have, have you tried to um, migrate Symphony 2 to Symphony 4 with this? I saw that you gave an example of Symphony yeah, 2. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I have a friend who was on Symphony 2.7 and he migrated to Symphony 3.4 and he had some templates, annotation stuff. Okay, but, but not from 2 to 4 directly, you haven't tried yet. Uh, actually, you usually migrate from minor version to minor version. So you just run four or five sets and you will get from Symphony. Two point something to four zero. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. do, by the way, do you have project on Symphony two? Yeah. On two point eight or? Okay. That's good. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thank you for attention.